Ah! What's up everyone, I'm the Cloaking Donkey, bringing you more Cloud Pirates. And today we are going to talk about the Torpedo Clipper class. Currently there's only one line of these ships, and if memory serves right, it's only a total of four of them. But they are certainly very interesting, and I definitely hope there's gonna be a few more lines of these with slight differences in the future. So currently, they are the fastest and most maneuverable ships in the game. If you've seen the battleship overview I posted the other day, you can see now how much faster these little bastards are. They are incredibly maneuverable, and it is really difficult to hit these ships when they are dipping and diving around everywhere. But to make up for that, they have incredibly low hit points and shields. The torpedo clippers generally have about a quarter or less of the hit points of an even tier battleship. And they also have a very low amount of shields and they only have one set of them that go all around the ship, meaning even through maneuvering you can't really give more shields to the enemy because you have just that one set and the overall maximum shield value is pretty low as well. And so that really means that your speed and maneuverability are your only defense and you have to use them as well as possible. You really can't afford to stand still and not move and, you know, snipe at someone. You basically have to constantly be on the move and that makes these ships quite challenging to play. Their overall damage isn't amazing either. They can do a lot of burst damage with their bow-mounted torpedo launchers, but they don't have a lot of sustained damage in their broadsides, and their torpedoes have long cooldowns. So if you miss your torpedoes, that's a big loss in damage. Generally, you want to make sure your torpedoes hit, and you want to go for sneak attacks, where you sneak up behind enemy ships and then fire your torpedoes into their engines, because that will oftentimes also knock out their engines, making them much easier targets for your teammates. Other than that, you can of course also hunt down low hit point ships that just barely escape the brunt of it, because you are simply faster than them and can just catch up and take them out. The other thing torpedo clippers are immensely good at is playing the objectives. Because of your speed and maneuverability, you can jump between control points very easily, and if it's the treasure hunt map, you are the best ship possible to carry the treasure to victory, simply because you are so very fast and so maneuverable, and it is so difficult for the enemy to take you out when you have the treasure. Now the biggest weakness of the torpedo clippers currently are the lock-on weapons. There are a few lock-on weapons in this game, usually they are modules, such as the swarmer missiles on battleships and crew us, but there are also a few other lock-on weapons on certain cruisers. These ships you absolutely have to avoid, because there is nothing you can do against their weaponry. They will follow you wherever you go, and you can't dodge their projectiles. And because of your low hit points, they take you out insanely quickly. There's one module on the torpedo clipper that can help with this problem, and it is a sort of shockwave that deactivates any projectiles in the area. Meaning when there's a swarm of missiles coming toward you, you can use that module to deactivate them all and basically negate this one salvo of swarmer rockets. But remember, these modules come off cooldown and then they will be used against you again. So definitely stay alert with how you use that module. Modules on the torpedo clippers are very much focused on speed, maneuverability, and sometimes debuffing enemies. The first torpedo clipper in the line also has a quasi-stealth module that makes you harder to detect for a certain while. It basically takes you off the minimap and makes you a little bit harder to see. I think it takes the overhead display of your name away as well, but I don't think it makes you entirely invisible. However, sadly, the further torpedo clippers down the line lose that module, so you shouldn't really get used to it too much. I use it on the tier 1 clipper you see in this replay because it's available and it's a pretty decent one and the other modules aren't so great, but in general, don't get used to it because you will no longer have it. There are several different styles of torpedoes on the various torpedo clippers, but generally there are two distinct ones. One that has a very, very long refire rate, incredibly slow projectiles, and does a lot of damage. And then another one that has slightly faster projectiles, lower alpha damage, and a lower reload. Personally, I like the longer reload because it allows you to do your stealthy attack runs more viably without losing a lot of DPS. It is generally very difficult to engage ships over and over because at some point 
well, the enemy will start paying attention to you. Whereas when you disappear behind a mountain for 10 seconds, they're generally going to start to shoot at other people. Now this next one might sound a bit cheap, but hey, it's a team game and it certainly helps your team if you make your team win. And what I'm talking about is that sometimes it is better for you to wait for your teammates to remove the shields on an enemy ship by firing so that your torpedoes will do the most amount of damage. Your torpedoes generally do a little bit more damage to hulls and they also have a good chance of critting when they punch into the hull. And of course, if you can shoot at an engine that isn't covered by shields, then you are probably going to knock those engines out. So a lot of the time, yes, it is very much better for you and for your team to wait until the shields have been removed. Don't get infatuated with your broadsides too much because they really aren't that good. I mean, simply compare these broadsides to the broadsides in the battleship over you and you'll see exactly what I mean. In general, the torpedo clippers are very interesting ships that definitely need a bit of support from their team though to function properly. But having torpedo clippers around, even just for playing the objective, is wonderful for a team and playing the objective is actually worth it as it gives a lot of experience and credits. Alright, and that is it for this class overview. Next time we will be looking at the support ships. But until then, I've been the Cloaking Donkey and I'll see you in another video!